Thank you for watching and listening. I just want to share something. So there was time uh, couple, many years back, stepmother just gave me batik cloth. And after some time, she gave me a white cloth. And I didn't know, so I wear the batik. And at the other time, I was practicing in front of the mirror because I wanted to sew. So she gave me this white cloth. And I come to find out the white cloth is kain kafan. Okay, the batik, uh, kain kafan is what the Muslim used to wrap uh, the deceased before they bury the body. The batik, usually when you go to Malay Muslim funerals, they use batik cloth and the white cloth to wrap the body of the deceased. So I was foolish. I was was uh, I wanted to learn how to sew. So I was just and I back then I didn't know anything. I was oh do you have any cloth? Maybe I want to go and buy extra clothes to practice sewing. And she said, oh since you want to sew here, take this white cloth. So this how cunning they are. They manipulate you. Let's say for example, and in, in that case, I wanted to learn how to sew. So she oh, I have a white cloth here. Uh, it's a, it's a you can practice to sew. If you want to, so I was foolish. I held it. I accepted it. So when they practice on this ritual, they need to offer you something and you need to accept it. Whether it is in your dreams, your dream of people offering you something, offering you food, offering you uh, usually batik, batik cloth. And in person, it was the same thing. And uh, come to think of it, when I was in polytechnic, the guy, the Chinese guy, he asked for my notes and then he looked at it and he looked away. He made a weird look and then he quickly returned it back. So he was also doing a ritual. This is what they do. They need to, if destiny is so, they need to take something from you and return it back to you. Keep the switch. And for the stepmother case with the bate and the kain kafan, which is the, uh, the shroud, burial shroud. Okay, she was trying to do death rituals. That's when I started getting sick. I think I got exhausted even much more worse than it was already. I mean, much more worse than it was before. <sighs> so be careful when people give you things and people want to borrow things from you. Just remember to uh, say in your mind, I don't accept any energy exchange from this. Okay? I rebuke. Any energy exchange from this because this is what they do. Because the whole time uh, I was told that she was chanting the mantra, so all these cult members they look like they normally would, they talk like they normally would, but in their mind is something else. So in their mind they were chanting the mantra, and it explains why. After that, uh, it was followed by when she kept caressing, harassing, and pressure, pressure. Back then, I was like, okay, fine, fine. I will just eat your food. I ate the curry, and I got sick. Because she had poisoned my food. And she was jumping up and down, and clapping her hand. Bagos, bagos, dia makan, dia makan. It's good, good. She already ate, she already ate. And I got sick. And it, it was the beginning of a traumatic experience at the two local hospitals. And as it turned out, she was performing a, a death ritual. To kill me and it was horrible my legs swell up and everything uh, i will talk about it some other time because i i, I can't, can't talk about it you now it's too much anyway i got back from the hospital and i remember at night my hands were crossed over my body like that and then i was groaning uh, 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 like that because you know why on the other hand back in indonesia or whatever altar they have they were performing it was as though my body was being wrapped up in the burial shroud okay that's the reason why at night my hands were crossed over uh, in front of me like that and then i was groaning like i couldn't move and then she, the stepmother was saying oh think oh, mengeran, mengeran. oh look at her, look at her. She, she's groaning she's groaning and all that and she acted like oh how are you or what not the whole time she herself was uh, uh, chanting the mantra so 
the WAP in Indonesia was performing the rituals. She herself was doing the rituals, and the other cult members, the stepmother, the the aunties who were part of it, were also performing the rituals. Everyone was doing it at the same time. So it's like your body, you're trapped in your body in a sense. And it makes sense why I had dreams of Malay, we call it pochong, basically um, a, like a, a wrapped up deceased body in the burial shroud. Because they were trying to trap myself in my body and also to kill me at the same time. And then other times I remember having this weird dream of myself on in a lying on the mortuary bed, that metal thing. Like your body is wrapped up in, in the burial shroud. Literally. It makes sense now because they were all performing the sacrifice ritual at the same time. So be careful what people give to you. Food, drinks, or items. Or when people borrow things for you, regularly uh, pray, regularly cut energy cord. Because you don't know. You don't know these people are like like uh, vultures, like leeches. They just find people to latch on. And it's as simple as that. Hey, here, take this cloth. Oh, you want to sew, right? Why don't you? I have this white cloth. Why don't you sew? <sighs> Hindsight 2020. So, cut the cord, cleanse your energy, call back your energy, cleanse your energy, protect your energy. Uh, pray a lot, okay, because it elevates your vibrations. And uh, you can just chant thank you over and over again, or whatever religious prayers that you know of, over and over again. To increase your vibration because love and gratitude are high vibrations. When you're vibrating very high, they cannot touch you. So they will do anything to drag you down, to cause you stress, to cause you humiliation. And another thing I want to point out, whatever you have gone through, whatever you have done, do not be ashamed of it. Okay, I'm not saying you should have no remorse. I'm saying they use anything to humiliate you, to shame you. Okay, they will hold it over your head. Because some people, simple things like at some point, uh, wearing sleeveless is considered shameful for us. Okay, it's different for be different people have different uh, thing that they can use against you. So whatever you have done, don't repeat it, but don't hold it over your head because they will use it to shame you, use it against you, whatever you're ashamed of. And anyway, this is how bullying works anyway. So... Call back your energy, cleanse your energy, protect your energy. Remember, if somebody were to offer you food and drinks, follow your gut feeling. You just don't know what people are doing and what they're trying to get rid of. You know, there's something they need to pass it along to somebody else. Okay? So, pray a lot. Follow your intuition. And just remember to say, I don't accept any energy exchange. That's it. Cleanse your energy, call back your energy, protect your energy, discern and set boundaries. Thank you for watching and listening.